Hello, and welcome to the January 2024 edition of Room for Everyone, the video podcast of The Rheumatologist. To celebrate the new year of 2024, today we're going to talk about what the future of rheumatology may look like in the far away, distant year of 2034. It seems like it was only yesterday that it was 2014. It was the year in which I entered the world of rheumatology as a fellow. And as I look back at that time, I'm struck by how different the world was. It was the year of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Guardians of the Galaxy was the biggest film of the year in the US. And you absolutely could not escape the biggest song of the year, Happy by Pharrell. Talk about a room without a roof. Anyway, I can't help but think about how much more alien the world of 10 years from now is going to be for rheumatologists and the patients who have rheumatologic conditions. I'm going to put myself out on a limb and make five predictions about our field. So if you're listening or reading from 2034 or beyond, please feel free to scoff at my mid-2020s naivete. Let's begin. Okay. First, the rheumatologist will be the tech whiz. Arguably, the biggest development over the past 10 years has been the innovation and rollout of artificial intelligence. We covered this in November of 2022, and the results of AI-generated the rheumatologist columns was really not very impressive. But now, in 2024, it's getting closer and closer to being ready for print. And in 2034, the physician editor of The Rheumatologist may very well be a historical position. But I'm not afraid of AI taking over the job of the rheumatologists at large. I strongly believe that my colleagues are going to stay on top of the advances in technology and incorporate them in the clinic. We will use our unique humanistic talents and skills to ensure that the technology is used to improve the quality of care. And that brings me to our second point. The rheumatologist will be a policy expert. As machines take over much of the mundane clinical work, rheumatologists will have to start assuming greater leadership in policy creation and regulation. By 2034, I envision every rheumatologist will engage in at least one advocacy event during their career, and a big chunk of rheumatologists will do so regularly. This will be important because of our third point, which is we are going to have better treatments and cures for our rheumatologic diseases. Looking back at my old notes on the immune system, the immune system looked so crude by comparison to what we know today. Thanks to enormous amounts of investment, we are digging deeper into how our immune systems are regulated, and in the process, we are making headways into better treatments and even cures. Because rheumatologists will take advantage of technical advances in the lab as well as in the clinic, and because we will champion drug discovery, access to medications, and study designs for rare conditions, we'll have better ways to ensure that our patients are well taken care of. Immunology brings us to our fourth point. Rheumatologists will unite with other specialists. In 2014, I started off as a fellow in both rheumatology and allergy immunology. In 2034, I think we will be seeing more rheumatologists branching out and collaborating with specialists in adjacent fields, and not just allergy immunology. Interprofessional and multidisciplinary teams that are part of learning healthcare systems will be the norm, both in academic and community practices. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, the rheumatology community will be more diverse, inclusive, and equitable. As a community, we've made significant advances in DEI over the past decade. I envision that these initiatives are going to have even deeper roots and yield even greater fruits. My feeling is that the backgrounds of our workforce will reflect those of our patients, and that will enable us to take better care of those patients that we serve. There's also lots of other great articles in the pages of this month's issue. Why do rheumatologists need to know about small fiber neuropathy? Why are community practice rheumatologists so vital to our specialty? Are we missing the cartilage disease as a cause for muscle weakness? That and so much more in this month's edition of The Rheumatologist. So please enjoy. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. After all, here at The Rheumatologist, it's always one for all and room for everyone. Happy New Year and happy reading. <laughs>